Caucasians. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> and we are live. <laughs> First episode of uh, Bowtie Certified. Thank you for everyone for tuning in. And um, yeah, today we have a special guest, very good friend of mine, uh, Broadus Palmer, um, founder and cloud coach of Level Up in Tech. And um, funny story, uh, I met Broadus on LinkedIn when he was a banker. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you heard me right. He was a banker. And this guy had so much tenacity, so much passion, and so much drive that he just made it. He made it in tech, a completely different industry. I mean, uh, I can relate because I came from fashion. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, um, I have, uh, first of all, maybe I should introduce myself. <laughs> My name is Anthony Tzavellas. And um, yeah, this Bowtie Certified is all about, you know, telling people um, real stories about real people in tech, the struggles that they went through and what they did with regards to certifications and their learning journey in order to uh, help better their career and better their lives. Um, I came from a fashion background and I got into tech uh, a little over 15 years ago and it changed my life. It changed my life for the better. And because of it, it got, I got to a point in my career where I, I had so many blessings and I wanted to give back um, by um, giving those blessings back. And so I started making courses and with these courses, uh, my goal was to, uh, allow people to consume the content and get a better education and improve their lives as we know it. So with that being said, Broadus Palmer, how are you, my brother? I'm good, brother. Thank you so much for having me on your, your show, man. Congratulations for launching the bow tie. So, see, you guys don't know, man. Like we, every time we see him on Wednesdays, he was in a clean uh, button up with the bow tie. So it's only right that he created bow tie certified. When he told me the name, I was like, yeah, man, you definitely took something that people know you as and just created a brand out of it. So congratulations, man. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Yeah. And for those of you who don't know, I only wear bow ties on Wednesday, <laughs> no other day, but Wednesdays, whether I'm at a coffee shop, at a conference, you see me on a Zoom call. Um, if I'm just lounging around the house, for sure, you will see me with a button down and a bow tie. <laughs> Clean, sharp. No doubt. No <laughs> doubt. So, uh, so yeah, to kick this off, um, brought us, what were you doing? Well, I kind of gave it away a little bit, but what were you doing before diving into the tech industry? And what made you decide that this was the path for you? Yeah, so I was a few things, right? Um, I was in banking, in the banking industry for about 13 years. But, you know, starting from the ground up, I started really, to be honest with you, in finance and payday loan industries. Wow. So really, um, started nine bucks an hour as a payday loan processor, right? And then got into banking as a teller and banker. And between those times, I was actually a musician as well. I was a sneaker reseller. I love sneakers. You guys probably see the sneakers in the back here. Um, and I, I helped design clothes as well. We had a little clothing company. And I believe those things helped me prepare for the career that I I am in today. Mm -hmm. And when I was in banking, really, I knew I wanted something bigger, right? Something more challenging. I wanted to make more money. I wanted to really just uh, have something that I could prepare myself to the next level. So to be transparent, to be honest, sitting down with a customer, um, and she was really being very rude. So the thing she said to me, and this is what got me into tech, and this cool. <laughs> the thing she said to me was, you know what? Look at my account and look how much money I have. And then that's the type of level of service I expect from you. And I was like, okay, like I'm gonna treat you the same 
professionally, whether you have $2, 200, 200,000 or 2 that, million. That was your waking moment. Right. And my waking moment was, I'm not doing this anymore. No, not at all. Something has to be better. So the light bulb went off. It's like, I'm getting into tech. And I didn't even know what the hell I was going to do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, tech is so vast. I'm like, it what is. are you going to do? And really just looking, you know, researching. And I can't remember. I, I guess I reached out to you on LinkedIn. And, and we started having conversations as well. And you just started telling me, you know, everything, a, a lot about the cloud. And I was looking at the cloud. And I'm like, okay, looking at highest paying certifications, because a lot of people were telling me to get certified. Yes. And looking at the pay that I can obtain with those certifications and learning cloud as well. I was like, well, cloud is the way to go. That's what I'm doing. Hey, yeah. no stopping from here. We going all the way, pedal to the metal. <laughs> I remember you reaching reaching out to me on LinkedIn. You're like, man, I want to get into tech. What do I do? I was like, go cloud. Go yep. cloud. And yep. you're like, all right, where do I start? Yep. Like, it is. You start with Adrian's course. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to my boy, Adrian Cantrell. <laughs> yeah, man. So, you know, learning and really uh, just figuring out the skills that I needed, right? Because after getting, I got certified in all three of my associates for AWS and really going into um, a role and really looking at uh, going into interviews and companies looking at me like, man, we like you, we like your attitude, we like your passion, but you just don't have the experience. And I'm like, you know, what I got to do to get experience? How am I gonna get experience if no one will hire me to get experience? Right, so so your strategy was then to, uh, correct me if I, if, I, um, if I heard this wrong, but you started getting certified. Yeah, that was the strategy because that's what uh, people were telling me around. Like, just get certified, get your certificate. Even if I wanted to get into like security, you know, get security plus, man, you'll get a security job. <laughs> so, you know, just looking at the realization uh, or the reality of what companies actually wanted, you know, I had to go back and really try to build some skills of something, right? Learn Linux, you know, really understand um, how to be a good admin and really just learn some bad scripting and, and learn more cloud, you know, um, and get hands on with building things and and ask questions and seeing if I could do it myself, right? So, came across a opportunity um, at uh, Linux Academy, and you know, really just showed myself, uh, showed the passion, showed the hunger, and that was my first tech job, period. And I mean, right. yeah. yeah. So what what allowed you to land that tech job? It was, you know, really being certified with a mix of being able to have a conversation about uh, the pain points companies were looking for you to solve. Mm, okay. So, you know, I was literally looking at roles and looking at the skills they wanted me to have and really building projects around those skills as well, trying to at least from, from my um, lack of knowledge then, right? Right. And, so I could just talk about something, right? Even if I didn't have the experience that they're looking for, at least I had an experience that I can just show them instead of not having anything. Okay, so for those of you who are uh, breaking into the tech industry or going to interviews, uh, brought us like, what what did you do? Like, I mean, when somebody asked you, you know, uh, do you know Ansible? Do you know um, Chef or Puppet? Uh, mm -hmm. You know and you didn't have those skills, what did you tell them? So I told them, you know, let's say um, when they were talking about Terraform at the time. Okay. At that time, Terraform terrified me. <laughs> <laughs> See what I did there? It terrified me. You know, so I was like, oh, that's one tool I do not want to touch. But if they talk about it, I could talk about, well, I'm not familiar with Terraform. But however, I have... Um, um, provision some stacks and updated some stacks with cloud formation. Right. And, and this is how I found that it was similar. And this is what I hear that how Terraform is different. But nevertheless, I'm more than willing to dive deep and learn more about ter Terraform if that's what you guys need me to do. And then I also said, and if you have um, staff that's already experienced with Terraform, right. pairing me up with them will be a tremendous success for me as well to learn quickly. And that's all you have to do. I mean, just be honest, because if you try to BS them, they're going to smell your bullshit. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know this is a family show, but still, you know what? Let's, no, be, right. Look, let's, let's be real here. Employers will smell through the bullshit. Yep. So, uh, you know, it, it just, you, you can't, there's no way around it. Yep. Um, and for those of you who are not tech savvy, uh, Terraform is a tool that is used um, prime, uh, actually a lot in DevOps currently and cloud um, that allows you to provision your, uh, your resources, your infrastructure using code. Yep. Uh, so there's no clicking around or anything in the console. It's just, it's all code and you know, it's streamlined, it's repeatable. And, um, and so, yeah, a lot of companies are looking for, uh, people that can use Terraform, people that can program in Terraform. Yep. And, you know, just really just, if you don't know it, just say, you don't know it. I've heard about it but I'm pretty sure I'll be able to learn it and get up to speed quickly um, with, with whatever you need me to do. You know, if you're already doing things on your own and they see that you're already creating things, even small things on your own, mm -hmm. well, why wouldn't they think that with help, you wouldn't be able to get up to speed if you're doing it on your own already. So true. you just gotta project that confidence, really. True that, true that. Um, so certifications. Uh, you know, name of the show, Bowtie Certified, right? Yeah. It's all about them certifications. Um, how many certifications do you have currently? Right now I have cloud certifications. I have four. Um, at the moment I have to re-up on all of my associate. <laughs> you and me both, brother. <laughs> so I'm just going to go ahead and, you know, I don't have the pro, so I'm just going to hit the pro and that'll research me for my associate sport. Uh, Solutions Architect Pro and um, DevOps Pro. It's going to be very tough. Mm -hmm. You know, we got to get it done. You know, if I'm out here uh, coaching and really helping people transition, um, then I have to lead by example. So definitely make sure I get my certifications done. Yes. But yeah, I have all the associate certifications for AWS and I have the Google Cloud Associate Engineer certification that nice. I'll have to re-up on that as well. <laughs> 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 And help you with that <laughs> yeah for sure right so yeah man um just certifications i believe make you marketable mm -hmm. um they get people looking at you but don't mistake them for skill a skill set right right so don't think oh man i got my aws security specialty um certification i'll definitely be you probably get in the, in, the, in the door to have a conversation about a security job absolutely absolutely right? When they find out that you don't understand any of the third party tools that they use or even AWS specific uh, security tools like guard duty and, um, you know, even things about um, uh, automated uh, detection and, and, and new uh, Amazon Macy, what they got coming out or it's already out, you really quickly find that they smell your BS once again. So really have those yeah. things on projects so look at this look at what um companies are using in security right yes and do your best to try to figure out how to solve problems with those tools some tools you may not be able to use on your own because they cost too much or just the infrastructure is connected to you may not be able to just use it on your own mm -hmm. um, and like yep kenneth thank you kenneth WAF, you know web application firewall so have those tools ready to go and have a conversation about what you experience with them. And that's all you can do. I mean, if, at the moment, if you're not good enough for that company, then don't take it as you're not good enough, period. It's just the relationship that you were trying to build with that company. They don't see the value in you. So treat it as a relationship. Like if you were sitting across from a, a lady or a man, and you're trying to get to know them and they just told you you're not good enough for me will you still try to prove that you're good enough for them no you'll just move on and try to find somebody else that you can really build a relationship with and value the set of skills that you're going to bring to the table amen brother amen <laughs> yeah so um how exactly did certifications help you on your journey and how long did it take you to amass the the certifications that you currently have so i was for my first three certifications which were the aws 
associate. I was hungry, man. So I started in like October and I got my sysops. I got everything um, by end of January. Wow. Yeah. So I was literally like just stuffing my brain and focusing because at the time I was focusing on passing the certs because I didn't realize there were other skills I needed, right? <laughs> so I didn't realize, you know, company was going to ask you for uh, scripting skills or, you know, configuration management skill set or, you know. So was this, was this when you were a, a banker or yeah. was this? This was when I was a banker, yeah. Nice. So, um, do it. Yeah, man. So I try to really just. I was thinking like somebody's gonna be working harder than me trying to get a position that I want right now. So what do I need to do? I need to work hard. But it took you know me going back to build those skills, and it took me a little bit longer to right. understand what I needed to do. So overall, it took me about ten months to get into the industry. And I remember, um, to be honest, I remember this like yesterday. So we had a new manager that was coming in into um, our retail branch, and I was transparent and i told her said listen i feel it i'm about to get an offer from a company probably in the next couple of weeks i've been working to move into tech uh, for the last few months and she would you know i said i'm probably not going to be with you so i want to let you know you're going to be losing your assistant manager in a few few months wow. and she told me she's like oh no um my husband's in tech my family's in tech it, it takes a lot longer to break in the tech. So I'll probably got you for at least another six months. <laughs> I, I lied to you not. When I got an offer from LA, I called her the next week and I said, hey, um, it's about that time. I put that uh, two weeks notice in. And I remember that like it was yesterday, man, where I think some of the people that I was working with, they just didn't believe that. And, and a lot of people don't believe that you can make great money in this industry. Like, mm -hmm. You know, especially in this time where we're working from home and, you know, people were billing their salaries. And they were like, no way you can make that from home. I've been making, you know, 30000 for the last 10 years. You're telling me I can make six figures doing it? Yes, you can. And you got to apply yourself and work hard. It's not easy, but you can. And people, some people don't have the mindset. And the people that I was working with at the time, mm -hmm. I think, didn't believe that I was going to be able to do it. And, you know, I worked my butt off and I did. Like I said, you know, perseverance, uh, determination, drive, uh, and the passion. Like how I tell people, how hungry are you to get that role? What were, what are you willing to do? Right. Seriously. That's 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 what it's all about. And you know, you're a, you're a shining example of it, brought us. Well, I appreciate it, man. <laughs> and, and really, you just got to look at how can I be of value to the company yeah. in my area, right? Don't, yeah, certifications, once again, make you marketable. Don't look at the certifications as, this is gonna get me into the door, you know, um, somebody, and I think that's, and not to really badger any vendor, but I think that's the, uh, the misleading part of it, where let's say someone passes a AWS Solutions Architect Associate certification, I'll mm -hmm. get, I've gotten messages of, Brothers, can you help me find a job? I'm trying to look at solutions architect roles. I get it all the time. Yes, yeah, so I'm like, you're, listen, it's levels to this. <laughs> you know, if you're just starting out, it's, you're not going to be able to, I'm not going to say it's impossible, but highly unlikely that you'll be able to get a solutions architect role just off of a certification and no experience. So we really have to bring it down to reality of, hey, these are the steps you can take to get to that role. Yes. But these are the things you got to learn first. And you might have to spend some time in a position or two mm -hmm. like this before you transition. Well, I mean, we, we've always discussed this, right? You, you not only have to pay your dues, but this is a long game in yeah. the end. You know, you, you get your step in. Um, I, I remember when I got in, uh, I was... Uh, I got a job at for like fifty thousand dollars a year. This is a architect role. Oh, wow. <laughs> this is an architect role. So I got in at fifty k, and um, and so all I did was I was like, all right, if I get this on my resume, if I get experience, then I can take it to the next level. Yeah, and sure, 
And sure enough, my next role, I was making 85,000. Right. And then up and up and up and up and up. And up. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the thing. Just show up value how you can. I mean, you got people, and, and this is what I, I, I try to uh, explain and train in my program, right? Where we want you to be better than what they think you are. So when people think of junior level um, engineers, even Linux engineers or DevOps engineers, they thinking of someone who just know the basics of the basic, maybe did a hand, hand, um, hands-on guided walkthrough project, just understand a simple service. But if you pound your brain and keep doing complex problems, you're going to come in and be able to answer and talk about how you can solve those problems way better than they thought you could. So you giving them something they're not expecting, then you can, if they come with, hey, we're going to start you off with 50, because they'll try to do it. We'll start you off with 50 because you're a junior. You can say, well, listen, you know, what about 65? Because even yeah. though I haven't had production level experience, these are the problems that I'm solving on my own. And this is exactly the problems you're looking to solve. So I'm not really a person who needs to be brought up to speed. I'm already up to speed. Mm. I just need to learn how to do it your way, right? What your culture is like. So that can give you some room for negotiating as well. Yeah. Yeah. No, definitely know your worth. Um, you know, I always tell people if they're having a really, really tough time breaking into the industry, sure, take a low paying job, but know that within six months to eight months, you will have enough clout and enough skill that you can get another job that you can up your game by 30%. Yeah. yeah. Now, just like you said, right, in, in, in contrast to what I've just said, you can use that um, coming in the door at a low paying rate to undercut somebody that they probably is going to hire at a higher rate. Right. So, but you could say, look, what are you guys willing to pay for this junior level role? Right. If they say, oh, uh, you know, we're willing to do uh, 75 to 80, you might say, well, look, you know, I'm hungry right now. I'm not saying to undercut yourself, but I'll take 70. Because if they got somebody that's just like you or competing with you that they was going to offer 80, 70 can save them $10,000. And then six months, you, you're gone anyway. Right. Plus so, the recruiter fees. Right. Plus recruiting fee. So six months, you're out of there. You're like six months. You're going to have everybody in your inbox. We got this great role. You know, it might be 10 years of experience, but we think you're fit for it. You know, but that's what it is. You're going to have people breathing down your neck with so many roles that you're just going to have to choose and really uh, understand what you can do and what you're comfortable with doing. And if that company makes sense, roll out and, and go with it. Yeah. Yeah. Truth. I, I I mean, that's, that's such a great tip. Um, I personally have not used that. And uh, <laughs> I, I think it's a, I think it's a fantastic strategy for real. For real. Um, so you mentioned that there were some other skills that you found that you needed in order to get a better position. Yeah. You mind telling the audience, what were those skills? And um and how did it allow you to get a better job? Yeah, so one skill set that I didn't even, it was mentioned to me that I needed to learn before I even started learning cloud was learning a little bit about Linux, right? Um, and I was like, I'm not, look, I'm trying to learn cloud. I'm not trying to, like, what, what the hell is this going to do? Like, I need the speed, just like every one of you probably who are trying to get into a role now, you're thinking like, I need to do that. I go fast. I need my certifications. After this cert, I'm going to get that cert. After that cert, I'm going to get this cert. Listen, learn the basics, learn the fundamentals, learn the foundations. And by learning a little bit about Linux, learning more about scripting, right? Even diving, diving into a little bit of Python, learning how to script in Python, learning a little bit about CloudFormation, how to use CloudFormation um, at a little internship that I had. It allowed me, once again, to understand some of the uh, issues that if they talked about, let's say Linux, I understood um, how I could solve problems with Linux. I can say, yes, I, you know, these are the things I'm doing now, you know, um, and when they was talking about bash scripting, I was talking about, yeah, this is a little task I was using to, you know, automate everything that I do on a daily. And, you know, I just try to automate it using bash. The thing is the best, 
when I got into the, well, when I was trying to get into the industry, the best quote I heard somebody tell me was, and some of you may agree, some of you may not, but the best engineers are the laziest engineers. Yes. So, and I, I actually said that once in an interview yeah. and, and the interviewer was like, excuse me. I yeah. was like, yeah, I'm a lazy engineer. You know why? Is because I'm never going to do the same thing more than two times. Right. I'm gonna automate it. Yep. Automate. I don't have to do it again and again and again and again. Yep. It's, it's all about working smart. Yep. But, um, I won't lie. I was a bit naive back then and I didn't know how to properly project that. Yeah, you're not <laughs> I just came off as lazy. <laughs> well, I think now, you know, everyone's in a rush to get in while, while yeah. you definitely want to get in and, and, and make some of this great money that you can. You definitely want to make sure you be able to keep your job once you get it as well. Mm. Yeah. Uh, we we have some people that come through, even in the program, that fake it till they make it, man. And they 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 come in and then they're like, look, man, I can you help me? Like, listen, like you you can't fake this. You got to come in and be honest of what you really can do. You can embellish a little bit. You can say, I mean, to me, you could be super confident in your skills and not have that much skill set, right? But you could be like, I'm super confident I'm able, I'm, like, I'm able to learn it. You're not going to say, oh, yeah, I could do that. I've done that. No, that's a lie because when they put that in front of you, they're going to be like, we thought you said that you were doing this for a while. Yeah. You say, hey, I'm super confident I can do this if you give me an opportunity. And then work your butt off trying to do it and then automate a lot of it so you don't have to continue to work your butt off to do it. Agreed. Agreed. So – uh, you've been talking about, you've been talking a lot about, uh, people in your program, which is, you know, level up in tech. Yes. Tell us more about that. So level up in tech right now is a, a program we use, uh, three pillars to describe it, learn it, lab it, level up. Right. So we really create a right now, 16 and 18 week, uh, strategic boot camp or program that help people right now become junior AWS um, DevOps engineers. So they learn everything from infrastructure to um, cloud to infrastructure as code, where we use, once we learn infrastructure as code, that's going to be the base of everything that we use and any integrated tool we will use with infrastructure as code. So if we learn configuration management, when we learn containers, when we learn um, new tools for CI, CD, we're using it with infrastructure as code. Um, learn more about scripting and programming um, and learn more about monitoring and really get them the hands-on uh, documented hands-on experience that they need to be able to go into a interview. And if they say, Hey, Anthony, tell me more about Terraform. Well, if you got seven, eight, nine, ten 10 Terraform projects, just pick one to talk about. Exactly. You have your whole entire process getting you in a, we're getting you in a process to document your process. So when they ask you to think about how you would be able to solve a problem, you already done this millions of times. So you already have your process and you say, step one, this is what I normally do. Step two, this is what I would do. Step three, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, so in really connecting them to, we at, we're partnering with some staffing agencies that help them land a role. Now we can't guarantee a role, you know, um, we can't make anyone hire you, but we give you, the best opportunity. Yeah, we give you the tools, we give you the confidence, we give you the um, the value within yourself to sit in that interviewing room and shine and and really show them how you can be of value. If that company don't work out, trust we're gonna get you placed in front of someone else and you can do the same. But overall, helping individuals come in and change their lives. And a lot of them are outside of the industry and a lot of them are in the industry as tech support, you know, somebody must might have been in a, let's say, network engineering role that they haven't touched cloud at all yet. Everyone starts from a, uh, when it's come to cloud, you can start at the same point as somebody who hasn't learned cloud at all, don't know anything about tech. You yeah. just might have a, you know, more uh, technical um, acumen than them as far as other tools. But when it comes to cloud, um, everyone starts off the same point. And you'd be surprised, man. You know, I have people that been in the industry for a while that struggle a little bit more than people who are not, haven't been in the industry at all. And wow. people will surprise you how they'll be able to step up and 
and really shine and take charge and be a leader, man. So that's what we're trying to build leadership, um, better engineers and more value for the companies that we we're trying to work with. It's amazing what you're doing brought us amazing. Uh, I, I think that, um, we need more engineers out there that that are equipped with the right tools right. that you need. Um, because I, I mean, sure, you can go out and get an education somewhere, uh, you know, a four year course or whatever, or a one year course. Um, but a lot of times, you know, they they miss out on those key concepts that you need to know. Uh, yeah. As well as you know, like you said, the interview skills. How do you expect to shine? in in um in an interview yep. if you don't know how to talk about what you've learned right and that's the whole point process 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 you have to have a process for everything you do so you can take it through your process and and, and maybe your process can be tweaked once you learn if you get into a role once you learn their way but nevertheless you have a process that you can talk about right you right. get your value too um once again they ask you about a tool and you don't, you never use that tool, but you use something similar. You can say, well, this is what I have used before and this is what I've done with it so far. And this is where it's similar and other ways. And this is where it's not. I mean, will you not hire a person because they use Google Sheets other than Excel? I mean, I know Excel is a pain in the butt for some people, but <laughs> it's similar, right? Where if somebody used Google Sheets before, yeah. they have an understanding of how Excel works. So yeah. if, you, if you're not, if you say you're not really looking for an Excel expert, but maybe somebody who has experience with it, but if they come in with Google Sheet experience and they can talk about it, is that the same type of experience? So I think so. Yeah, I think so too. So, yep. Yeah, cool. Um, so what does the future look like for Broadus Palmer and Level Up in Tech? Oh, uh, so... Right now, we have a goal of really helping 100 uh, students, 100 clients transition and, and land a role. Um, right now, I see, you know, for the things we got coming for uh, different markets, this is only going to get bigger. Um, it's only going to, you know, we're going to create more content. You know, I have a habit of uh, at least trying to hire people that come out of the program as coaches as well, because they've been through it. They understand. You know, even some of the early clients that I had that, you know, the program has changed now. They've been through the grind and grit of it. So they're like, you got this in front of you now. It's no reason why you should be successful. Let's go, you know. Um, nice. But I see right now, you know, for the next year, a, a bigger staff, more people we're putting through the pipeline and better relationships. Um, I don't want to give off too much business intelligence, but for right now, level up at tech is going to be uh very big in 2021, I guarantee you. So, yeah, man. So everyone starts their business with a vision. What is your end goal? What is your ultimate vision? My ultimate vision is to help people once again, change lives, change their lives. Right. So like I, like how I did mine and other, and people helped me and, and you know, people like you gave me great advice. I, started level of the tech with the just the thought of what if i could help people do the same thing i did in a shorter time and not bump their head like i did right not have to go back to the drawing board man we really had people that could just you know give us that that route that path yeah. to yeah. follow um, exactly. be so much easier <laughs> trust yes we know right so what would it look like for a person who may not, you know, because some people think tech is the industry where you have to be born smart. Like, they got, oh, I got to be a genius coming out at three years old coding. No, like half of us don't even code and have no wish to program. Hi. So, yeah. <laughs> what does it look like for somebody who's a waitress to come in and, and do this? What does it look like for somebody who's a police officer, fireman, or just somebody who wants something better? and just don't have other avenues that they think is stable right now. How we can show them this is a stable industry and something that you can grow into and really prepare yourself to the next level to be very stable financially and be able to take care of um, and, and pass this down. This is generational 
um, wealth of knowledge that True. children can have, your children's children can have and build upon. Mm -hmm. So that's the vision that I have for Level of the Tech. That's awesome, dude. That is so awesome. Yeah, it, you know, if, if I, I, I think back to, you know, 2004, when I got into, into, into schooling for database administration, um, for those of you who didn't know what it was like back in 2004, let me give you some insight. <laughs> I was scrolling, uh, infinitely through torrent sites. Now, for those of you who don't know what torrent mm -hmm. sites are, um, these are sites where you can find, uh, usually, uh, pirated books, videos, music, whatever. Um, and so at the time there were no online, uh, consumable videos that I could take where I could learn. So I, I was downloading eBooks and I was just like, you know, I, as a fashion designer, I was like, I don't even know what a schema is. Like <laughs> I, I'm still trying to grasp these concepts, right. but if I had somebody that could really bring me along, you know, on that path, on that journey, uh, without me having to bang my head, um, sure it was more rewarding, but it would have been a lot easier for me. It would have been less of a struggle and it would have given me a little bit more, um, it's the word I'm looking for. It would have given me a little bit more confidence. Mm. You know, because when, when you're coming from a, from a different industry and I, um, you know, I, I can't speak for you brought us, but I speak for myself when I say, when I, when you're coming from a different industry and you're getting into tech, it's like you're, you're coming into a world that you don't know if you're going to make it or not. Right. Yeah. It's scary. It really is. It's like different language. Like you stepped in to a different country and they're using language and you're like, I don't know what they're talking about. And, and it was uh, ironically, my, my big brother, he was, uh, he, he went to school for electrical engineering and he immediately got into the, into the tech industry. And, uh, and now he's working for Shopify. But at the time I was a fashion designer and he was in tech and I had no idea what the hell he was talking about half the time. <laughs> but now like you know, after so many years of just having that learning mindset and, you know, getting my certifications, doing the hands-on labs, getting my hands dirty and building things, mm -hmm. just, it finally came into fruition. But if there was an easier way to do it, like I, I would have, I would have paid money for it for sure. Yeah. And that's, you know, I was like, well, a lot of people were hitting me up when I got into the industry because I was already doing like content and stuff, motivational content. And people were like, yeah. how can I get in the cloud? I was just helping people just spending time. I'm like, why not build something that I can help people and, and help and build um, a wealth that I can pass down to my family and, and how my son be like, OK, my dad's doing this. I can do that, too. You know, even people that I'm helping their children, my mom's doing this and she was doing this at first. I'm, I'm going to do that as well, because there's no limits when you get into this industry. You can start your own business, create your own application and be selling for millions. You never know what you're stumbling upon, the need yeah. that you can feel in this industry and the value you can bring to a company and how much they'd be willing to pay for. it. Yeah, that's and that's the thing, you know, you get into these. Uh, you get into the industry and you don't know where you're going to end up. I mean, I thought it was going to be a, I went to school for database administration and I thought I was going to be a database administrator when I got out. No, I ended up being a Unix administrator. <laughs> totally opposite. It has nothing to do with databases, but you know, the, the journey that brought me to, you know, being a technical trainer today, it, it just, it varies, you know, some people love to code and I, I see it all the time. And, you know, they, they get into these, um, into these roles that really bring that out in them and they, they show their passion. And, uh, and so it, all I'm saying is that getting into tech, it's, you know, like you said, it's so vast, it could bring you anywhere, absolutely anywhere. 
um, you know, whether it be uh, a software engineer, whether it be a DevOps engineer, database administrator, uh, full stack developer, mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the possibilities are endless. And, yep. you know, even if you, if you find something in the industry that's missing, and you have the skill set to do it, even if you don't have the skill set to do it, and you have that learning mindset, world's your oyster. Yep. If you solve the problem, it's a wrap. Yeah. <laughs> you, can, you can solve a problem. You can go anywhere you want to go, period. Agreed. Agreed. So um, if you could offer one piece of advice, Broadus, to the audience, uh, or anyone who is striving to get into tech or they want to land a better role in the tech industry, mm -hmm. what would that piece of advice be? Stay the course. So choose what you want to do, right? Find out it's something remotely that you think you may like. Look at what companies are asking you to have for that type of role and make a plan. Either that's gonna be your own plan, either that's gonna be talking to a program um, or talking to an owner of a program or going to a boot camp, going to school, whatever the case may be, and stick and focus on that plan. People are gonna to come to you and say, I say this all the time, if you're trying to learn to be a, a cybersecurity engineer, people are gonna to come to you and say, you know what, listen, if you learn Kubernetes right now, my job's hiring, they look for people that have Kubernetes skills all day just learn that i'll get you a job and if somebody's gonna say hey you know uh you know we got somebody that needs to understand terraform and, and, and ansible if you can learn that we're gonna get you a job here and next thing you know you're taking off your course and going trying to learn these skills that people are telling you about only to you not to land a role and when you could have just focused on your path step by step and eventually became great at uh what you were trying to become instead of having your mind placed in a thousand different directions. Just focus on that one direction. If you don't like it, you can always pivot, right? But don't try to do a thousand things at once. Stay focused on that one task. If it's whatever goal and role that you're going for, keep going. Trust, you, you, will, you will always receive your return on investment if you do not quit. Amen. So here's, here's a great question. What if there's a person who is who wants to get into tech, but they have absolutely no idea where to start. I say connect with me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> really, uh, I'm on LinkedIn, uh, LinkedIn.com forward slash level up with BP. You can go to the site levelupintech.com. Connect. Um, you can text me uh, 503-379-9586. Oh, damn. <laughs> Just giving out phone numbers now. You can text my text number. This is text line. Um, don't call it because you will not get through. Um, but, you know, if you have any questions, really just ask them, right? It's no such thing as a, a dumb question because you don't know what you don't know. So in order for you to make a great decision about your life and about your career, you need to ha have all the information that's in front of you so you can say, Yes, I want to be a DevOps engineer. I think, you know, it's paying well in my area. A lot of companies are hiring for it. I think this is something that I might like. So connect, you know, it's all about networking and it's all about who's in your network. So any yeah. you have, feel free. Yeah, I think I think I want to build on that for one second, uh, brought us. So if you are looking to, let's say, become a DevOps engineer, there's nothing stopping you from reaching out, whether it be on LinkedIn, on Twitter, um, you know, on all the social media platforms to a person who is already in that role yep. and asking them, hey, you know what? I'm looking on getting into this role. What is it like? What does your day to day look like? Um, what kind of skills do I need to possess? Uh, what kind of learnings are you doing? I, I mean, you know, it, there's never a a better way than to just ask somebody yep. and nine times out of 10, they will tell you, they will spend the time to tell you. So don't think that, you know, I, uh, you know, this guy doesn't know me, but you know what? 
they, like you said, Broadus, they all, everyone starts off at the same place. Yep. Especially when it comes to cloud. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, you got people that went to school, you know, um, computer science degree and came out and they've been in tech ever since they graduated. But, you know, for a person like you and a person like me, we came from outside of the industry and we still here. Right. So anyone can do this. It's not I don't listen. I didn't my upbringing. I didn't think about a computer or tech. or And that's the thing. A lot of people going to think that, you know, a lot about computers. Right. They're like, hey, my Mac's messing up. Can you, can you fix it? I'm like, listen, I'm not in tech that. <laughs> but you can do this. Whatever you want to do, put your mind to it. Make the right connections. Ask the right questions. And don't be afraid. Because that relationship, like Anthony, it will blossom with something bigger than, and, and better than what you thought. And it's just from a conversation we had on LinkedIn. Yeah, it was, it was just, you know, you reaching out to me. And you know, next thing you know, we're like, look, we're here on the show together. <laughs> yep. I think it's awesome. You know, the more you can, um, you can spread your wings and, you know, really reach out to your network the more help that you can get. And everyone, I haven't met anyone in the tech industry so far that has been like, no, I'm not going to help you. You got to figure it out on your own. No, No. everyone is here to help everyone. Um, You know, I, I, I also like to recommend Slack communities. So if you Google, you know, different Slack communities uh, that are out there, there's ones for, um, you know, Adrian Cantrell runs one, uh, techstudyslack.com. There's one for Google Cloud. There's one for AWS. There, um, you know, uh, um, Corey Quinn, he runs another one that's that's really good. So there's, there's a, a bunch of different avenues that you can take to talk to different people that will help you on your journey, that will help you on your course. Yeah, absolutely. So- because they know how it is. They know what they those nights where they were frustrated and struggling to learn something new. So how can they turn that back on somebody who's trying to, we should be able to be comfortable with giving information mm-hmm. to help people accomplish something. And it may take us a year or two to do in months or weeks, giving that information to help them accomplish quicker. That's what it's all about. So here's another question for you. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I don't mean to put you on the spot or anything, but what is the, um, the most employable technology that you see out there that people should, should be like, you know, if you're starting, this is where you should go because this is where you're going to make either the most money or the most impact or have the best chance of success. Within cloud and DevOps right now, um, Terraform. Infrastructure is cold, you know, it's almost a must um, for companies right now. Uh, well, almost a must skill for you to have right now. And if you can learn, you know, maybe even containerization or orchestration, um, it's microservices. But for right now, if you understand infrastructure is code and you can apply that and use it with a lot of other tools, um, I think that's going to make you the most marketable and bring the most value to a company if you're going into cloud or you're going into you know development operations so taking it one step back mm-hmm. um you know because y- you have to have a, a base oh, in order to learn terraform <laughs> yeah, yeah sorry man <laughs> it's all good it's all good uh, learning um infrastructure learning whether it's it's you know windows operating system or linux you mm-hmm. know learning the base you don't have to be an expert just learn the essentials understand what it is how you can use it and learn some basic tasks and learn how to automate basic things and from there you can build upon learning you know text editors learning git learning source control Mm. going into you know learning because terraform if you're using it with cloud you can learn more about the cloud itself with using terraform as well so, you know, the building blocks right now is, I'll say, you know, Linux, or if you're a Windows shop, learn Windows. Yeah, server. yeah, yeah. I hate Windows, but um, Linux. <laughs> <laughs> but, Sorry for those of you Microsoft folk in the audience. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, sorry. But uh, yeah, that's the basic building blocks and build from there. Whatever you want to do will come from there. Nice, nice. Well, listen, we're coming up uh, on 50 minutes and um, I wanted to open up the floor to the audience. Um, if you have any questions for either Broadus or I, uh, feel free to ask them. And, uh, and, you know, we'll, we'll be more than, well, we'll try to answer them as best as we can. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody come in, well, I have an issue at work and then building this infrastructure and I'm like, <laughs> we can't help you with that. You gotta, you gotta learn that, you know, so. Uh, yeah. so, um, so brought us what, uh, what do you see as the future in tech? Oh man. Um, artificial intelligence and machine learning, man. I mean, this is the year, yeah. this is the years of data, you know, and the more you can predict behaviors of your customers, the more you can feel the need before they even know they have it. Right. So I think that's why obviously Facebook works so well because they figured that out a long time ago mm -hmm. where, you know, we have compulsions, we have patterns, habits that we're not really totally totally aware of and then we we impulse buy something because they figured out what we like then we're like man i just keep every time something pop up on facebook man i gotta buy it <laughs> because they know yes what you're doing and what you're what you like um, patterns of behavior yeah patterns of behavior so if that's something you guys have an interest in really um dive in, immerse yourself in the culture, immerse yourself in the technology and figure out how you could be able to solve problems in the industry and companies will be swarming around you, especially in this day and age right now where we're trying to implement that so much into everything that we do. Um, from driving to not even, you know, a, a tool knowing what we're going to do, what time we come home every day, what do we like, what time we like our coffee, uh, what are we cooking today? You know, everything. So ML and AI, I think, is the future right now. And I don't know what's going to top that in the next 10 years. They might come out with something that's, you know, crazy. But for right now, yeah. So uh, I got a few questions from the from the audience. Mm -hmm. One of them is, what is the easiest cloud platform to learn is uh, Kenneth Daniel's question. For me, I'm going to speak for myself. Um, AWS, I think, is the easiest cloud platform to learn. I think with Azure, it, it to me, it assumes you have a Microsoft background. Yes. Um, and GCP is typically assumes that you're a developer um, for the most part. But with AWS, it's just have so many services that are simple, one click and easy to use. Yeah. You know, understand the concepts and understand what that service does. And you can easily uh, move over and compare it to the other tools that are using other clouds. Yeah, I'm going to do a quick plug here. For those of you who are looking to learn Google Cloud, you can uh, simply go to my site, training.antonyt.com. If you're looking to learn AWS, my man, Adrian Cantrell has got the floor. He is hands down one of the best trainers for AWS, learn.cantrell.io. Um, his courses are impeccable. Like there's no other way to describe it. He's just one of the best trainers in, in the industry, in my opinion. Yeah, he is a great trainer. Uh, yeah. I mean, Adrian's a great guy. Yes. So if you, you listen to man, what's up, man? <laughs> okay, we have another question. Uh, someone with no technology ground, how to break into cloud computing, asks Fred. Fred, um, really understand, you know, what are the top roles that, you know, you can do in cloud, right? And look at, this is what I would do specifically. Like, look at some of the top roles in cloud. Search those roles on Indeed or Glassdoor and see what is available in your area or whatever area you want to live in, or even if you want to do remote, right? And look at the skills they're asking for for that role. And if you don't understand them, if you don't know where to go get those skills, 
you know, really reach out to people who understand that and already in that industry, right? Or in that role and ask questions, you know, talk to a coach, go to a site, see what you can do as far as on your own as well. Um, but it's plenty of options. The only thing you need to do is start, right? Don't compile a huge list and become, um, don't have analysis paralysis. <laughs> I was just about going to say that. <laughs> don't have analysis paralysis and start don't compile a huge list of things you need to do before you ask a question just ask the question and get the information and decide if this is what you want to do or if it's another role that you would like to do yep mm. great advice great advice we have another question python or go python well for me i like go but python is more used um by companies now you know you might see you know a few companies asking for go or or kotlin or things like that um but for automation python is the way to go to learn if you want to learn go after that it, it should be easier for you to understand cool cool um now i don't want to get into specifics about uh how much your course costs mm -hmm. but somebody was saying that the level up in tech program is not um achievable for some people let's say if you're a waitress um how would you recommend that you know they break into the industry yeah so right now just to get that clear we're working on uh, certain programs that we're going to offer uh to individuals at a um lower lower rate that's going to help all individuals in markets that which can afford a, a boot camp or a program like this to be able to learn what they need to learn and help transition. But for now, there's totally a free, a lot of free resources that you can use. I mean, if you wanna just learn cloud, it's AWS documentation, right? That you could just pull up or whatever cloud service provider that you choose, just understanding the core services of what they have to offer. Agree. On those and getting a good understanding. There's also, you know, free Linux, um, you know, books that you can get as well to understand Linux or Windows. So it's a lot of free information out there to even just try out to see if this is something that you want to do. But understand that, you know, at, at some point, um, regardless of where you are in your career, and even if it's not with level up in tech, but with anyone, you're going to have to invest in yourself to move forward. So investment is going to need to be made at some point. Uh, before you even get into the industry, whether it's going to be certifications, taking certifications, whether it's going to be paying for more training because, you know, you can't find more free training based on what you need. So just understand that. Understand it's going to be a sacrifice of your time. You know, it's going to be tremendous effort. But most of all, you got to plan the financial aspects of it to be able and understand where you need to invest in yourself in. Yeah. And, you know, like I was saying before, it, it can be scary uh, for people who are out of the tech industry to say, you know what, I don't know if I can drop this much money to, you know, to, to get a job that I don't know if it's guaranteed. Right. I mean, I dropped and, and I'll be honest here. I, I dropped, um, uh, I think it was like 20 grand on my course my database administration course. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it was, I had no money. I actually took out a loan, but it was the best money I ever spent. Because it, it, it enables you to see more about yourself. Right. So mm -hmm. one thing as well, I will point out is, you know, yes, $4,000 is a lot of money. Right. But compared to other programs out there, it's only a fraction of the cost. You know, when you're looking at boot camps, that's going to help you and try to tr help you transition into a role and give you the tools you need to be successful in developing those skills and leadership skills. This is only a fraction of the cost. But once again, you know, you got to be willing to invest in yourself at some capacity and at some point. So don't don't look at taking a freeway all the way because you got to look at if you're not willing to invest in yourself, who do you think is going to invest into you? Agreed. Agreed. You know, I, I, I tell my wife that, you know, there, you know what, there's this, there's this course that I want to take costs $500. They're like, she's like, uh, is it a course? Yeah. Okay. Take it. 
<laughs> oh, no, you know, oh, I got to take another certification. How much does that cost? 200 US dollars. Okay. So take it. Right. Return on invest. You will always get your return on investment if you don't quit. Totally. Well, if it's 4,000 or 20,000. If you don't quit, that 20,000 is going to pay for itself over and over again every year. Let's say you go from $30,000 to getting your first entry level job. Let's say they pay you 60, right? You made that 40, I mean, you made that 20,000 back double and you're going to get that every year from now on. Mm -hmm. And then you're only going to go up from there. So I, I spent thousands of dollars on certifications, thousands. I'm talking about even the ones that I failed, I still paid money for them, right? Because, you know, there's, there's some uh, companies that will pay for it. But a, a lot of my certifications came from out of pocket. Yeah. And uh, and it ended up paying off in dividends. So, yes, you know, starting off the freeway is the way to go. There's a, a ton of free resources out there. You know, YouTube videos, documentation, um, labs that you can go through. You know, all you need to do is Google it enough and you'll find it. But there comes a point where you got to say, okay, I need to invest money into myself in yeah. order to make myself better at what I do. Because you have to think of yourself as a business, right? When you go to a employer and sit in an interview, think of they're hiring your services. So do you think as a business, are you going to make it if you don't invest any money into it? Mm. to really spruce up your your talent and your value that you can offer. So just think of that. I think it was Sam that answered that, asked that question. Think of that and just really um, ask yourself, you know, what path you want to go down and just have an understanding of how much it may cost. You may not know it at first, but just go down some free resources and then ask yourself, what does it take for me to get to the next level? And then plan accordingly from there. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, Broadus, unfortunately, we are out of time. Um, but I really wanted to thank you for coming on the very first show of Bowtie Certified and, uh, and you know, letting people know about your story. Hey, so, man, I appreciate you having me, brother. Seriously. Congratulations on this show. I hope it is super successful, man. And, you know, definitely anything you need from me, just let me know, brother. Thank you. I appreciate it. So again, you can reach Broadus uh, through all the usual channels, uh, LinkedIn, Facebook. Yeah. Uh, you're on Instagram too, right? <laughs> yeah. So um, Instagram uh, is Mr. Palmer Level Up. Um, but I'm not on Instagram a lot, but you can reach the Level Up in Tech Facebook group as well. It's this growing community. You can reach me on LinkedIn and you can go to levelupintech.com as well. And YouTube, level up in tech, YouTube. Nice, very nice. I can't wait to see some more, some more vids. Yeah, man, it's coming. Bro. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, so again, I want to thank you all for tuning in to this uh, first show for Bowtie Certified, and we will see you next week at noon Eastern Standard Time for our next guest. So thanks again. Have a fantastic day. And uh, keep learning and keep on striving. See you guys.